This is not a perfect case. I don't want to show you cases that are all perfect. This young man's home care is not good. And we had treated him for intraarticular issues and myofascial pain. And now we're restoring teeth with some crowns and composites. And it's just one of those things. It's real life. This is not a, a dental school where you have these pristine cases coming in. And so this young man, for whatever reason, was not a good home care person. Plus, you've got provisional restorations that are connected so he couldn't floss between those crowns. So I'm going to show you how I perfected the interproximal contacts with solid models. We've got other videos on that. And also how we controlled the gingival bleeding prior to seeding the crowns. You must control the gingival bleeding before you seed a crown or a veneer. You'll get blood underneath the crown or veneer and it can not only affect the bond strength but affect the, the color of the crown. You'll see that blood shining through if it's a tooth colored restoration. This is before and after these two restorations on the patient's right side and this is before and after these four restorations on the patient's left side. So we're removing the provisional restorations. I won't be talking about crown preps or impression taking in this video. I'm just going to talk about seeding the final restorations. Now if the teeth are sensitive, you'll want to anesthetize them ahead of time. We've got several videos on painless and profound local anesthesia in the library. If they're not sensitive, you may not need to anesthetize the teeth. So on the one side, we've got crown, crown. On the other side, we've got two crowns, then the posterior teeth. You can see how inflamed and bleeding the gingival tissue is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is polish with pumice and water. You can see he's just bleeding like a stuck pig because he's not a good home care person and he's been wearing the provisionals. So once I polish with pumice and water in a profi cup, I'm going to isolate the mouth and wipe the teeth with isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball. I'm not worried about bleeding right now. I just want to get any debris off the teeth. I wanted to show this case in particular just so you know, we face the same thing in my real dental practice where I practice four days a week, just like you do. They come in and they're not pristine. So what do you do when they're bleeding? This is the best hemostatic agent I've ever found. 38% phosphoric acid, just like you use to etch teeth before you place composites. And squirt that on the bleeding gingiva and leave it for about 45 seconds to a minute. It doesn't damage the gingiva, but what it does, it causes that bleeding area to scab and stop bleeding. I discovered it by accident when I was placing uh, veneers or doing composites or something, and the etch was on the gingival tissue, and after leaving it there for 45 seconds or a minute, the bleeding stopped. So just squirt it on there and leave it. You may have to do it a couple of times if it's really bleeding. You can see this is some blood. Now when you rinse it off, this is very important. If you rinse it with your air water syringe, you've messed up because that's too much pressure and you're going to cause it to bleed again. Get a water bottle and put ice cold water in it and you want to fairly large tip and get this water out of your water dispenser and it's got real cold water so you want it ice cold. If it's ice cold you probably should have anesthetized the teeth because the teeth would be sensitive to the cold and just rinse it off. You can see how this scabs. Just rinse it real well and it scabs and clots. So this is how that's how you stop the bleeding and this is how you create perfect interproximal contacts. You do it on a solid model. Now this is the dime model, and that's where the, the restorations are actually fabricated. This is the solid model, and you always use a solid model for perfecting the interproximal contacts on veneers, inlays, onlays, or full crowns. If you try to, to create uh, interproximal contacts on a dime model, it's not going to work they're going to be too tight. But if you'll do it on a solid model, you can perfect them. And what you do is you cut away the 
gingival part of the stone to get rid of the gingival tissue and even into the prep a little bit because the only part you're interested in is the interproximal. You can refer to that link in the Library of Dentistry Master Classes. You'll see we've cut this away so the crown will seat completely on the model and the gingival tissue stone won't hold it up. So I'm taking it off of the die model and placing it on the stone model. So the st we, cr we fabricate or we perfect the margins of the restoration on the die model. We perfect the interproximal contacts on the stone model. You may think, well, that's too much trouble. It's not too much trouble. Trouble is when you've got interproximal contacts that are too tight and the crown won't seat, especially if you've got several crowns in a row. There's a video in DentistryMasterClasses.com of seating three or four crowns in a row where the technician, for some reason, lost his mind and did not use the stone model to perfect the interproximal contacts. That's a bad day if you don't know what to do because you don't know which one is too tight and if you're not careful you'll create an open contact so that video shows you what to do if that ever happens but the best thing is an ounce of prevention prevention is worth a worth a pound of cure just get it right take a little time use the solid model see so these are perfect on the solid model and at the most you might have to just dust one every now and then but normally there's no interproximal adjustment whatsoever see so perfect contacts yeah they just drop to place ideal interproximal contacts and we'll floss them popping this is unwaxed floss because it's thin and it'll break if it's too tight and now you don't want to floss it all the way down to the gingival tissue because you don't want it to bleed again what do you do if it starts bleeding again repeat that 38 percent phosphoric acid placement and rinse it off with ice cold water one more time so we've these are Emacs or lithium desilicate crowns. So the laboratory has treated them already. You can refer to that link on how to treat lithium desilicate crowns. And once we've tried them in the mouth, we come back and wipe them with isopropyl alcohol and dry that real well. Dry them real well. Then this is a wonderful carrier, just a red rope wax on the end of a cotton tip applicator. You can refer to that link. And I use that to carry crowns, inlays, veneers, bridges, so you don't have to put your fingers in the mouth. You can just use that to carry the restorations. Then always put a little Vaseline on the interproximal contacts of crowns, veneers, inlays, and that prevents the cement from setting up in the contact area. So get everything ready. And then we're going to gently wipe the teeth again with this time with tubelacid and be careful you don't stir anything up and make it bleed then put a two by two on the teeth after you've done that to just dry them then you squirt the cement this is unisim just around the edge of the crown don't fill it up and i cement one side at a time see there's no bleeding now push it to place now there will be bleeding once we floss the contacts, but that's okay because the crown is seated. Then we're gonna pop, this is waxed floss. We're gonna pop that between the contact. Now this is so important. You pop it between the contact because you wanna remove any cement that's in the contact, but you never remove the excess cement around a crown or a veneer until it has initial set. If you do, you'll end up with gingival bleeding and irritation and staining and possibly decay at the margin because no matter how good the veneer is or the crown is, there's a tiny little micro gap between the restoration and the tooth. The better the impressions and the laboratory and all those things the less the micro gap but there's always a little micro gap so if you wipe away that excess cement before it has initial set you're going to pull some of that cement out of that micro gap remember bacteria is only eight microns in diameter and so it can get in the tiniest little hole and that's why you're going to have irritated gums red gums bleeding gums stain and sensitivity and decay if you wipe it off. So let the, the excess cement set initially. 
not completely because that's too hard to remove. Just set initially so you, you peel it off. You don't wipe it off. You use the back end of a scaler and it just peels off. And once it peels off, that cement has completely set in the micro gap and it's, it's sealed so you won't get sensitivity, decay, staining. These I'm only popping through. Now, again, we're bleeding like a stuck pig again because we're removing that excess cement, but it doesn't matter because the crowns are securely seated and completely seated on the teeth. So wipe. This is a amalgam carver and that's a very good, and then a scaler, and that's a very good thing to remove the excess cement that's on the crown. So you can see we've got perfect contacts here. Then we go to the other side. So work out the occlusion on one side, the seating and the occlusion on one side before you go to the other side, then you're not chasing contacts. You can get the occlusion perfect on one side, then seat the restorations on the other side. So we've got bleeding back here. I mean, this guy's home care was really not good at all. So leave it for 45 seconds, then again, rinsing it off with the cold water in the water bottle, putting the crowns to place, checking with unwaxed floss, we're trying this one in and that one in, checking it with unwaxed floss because it'll break if the floss, I mean, if the contact's too tight. Then treating the Emacs crowns appropriately, then wiping them all with isopropyl alcohol. I like metal occlusals on second molar teeth. Now this is precious metal. I either use solid gold or just precious metal, and sometimes I'll I'll use a tooth colored facing because you can't see them back there. And gold is the only thing that a patient can't break. They can break zirconium. They can certainly break Emacs and certainly break porcelain. Okay, so we're placing the carrier and the Vaseline on the interproximal, treating, then wiping the inner part with isopropyl alcohol. We get them all ready, control the bleeding. We wipe with a light coat of tubelicid red and place the cement just around the rim. Don't fill it up, or you could have a problem with seating the crown completely. You want the excess to squirt out the sides, out the margins. You see, there's no bleeding anymore. Crowns to place. I hate interproximal contacts that are too tight. You put that to place, and then you're gonna floss it, but you're not gonna remove the excess cement around the margins. It's fun to put in crowns if the occlusion's right and the interproximal contacts are right. If you'd seated all these crowns and you had to adjust the contacts, you're gonna question whether you wanna be a dentist or not. It is just a pain to have to go back and adjust them. So use the solid model. And now you know how to control bleeding with that 38% phosphoric acid. Somebody commented one time on that video, they said, well, I talked to my professor and he said that doesn't work. Well, hell's bells, try it, just try it. It does not affect the gingival tissue and it's a fabulous hemostatic agent. Much better than hemodent or any of those things because it causes it to scab. Okay, so we're popping this. Now this is wax floss. Before we seat the crowns, when we're just trying them on, we check the interproximal contacts with unwaxed floss because we want it to break if it's too tight. So I'm using the back edge of that scaler. Now it's gonna bleed once you start removing excess cement, but that's okay because the crown's seated and sealed. So here's the final restorations here on that side, and here are the final restorations on this side. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.